set, go. I pressed it. So <laughs> we are recording now. Welcome to GUI and in web browsers we can call. This is 4th of December 2019. Uh, we are back after a few weeks of travel, uh, team weeks, and being sick after going back from a multiple hour journey to the team week. So we are not at 100%. By we, I mean me, because uh, I've been sick for the past week. But hopefully, we'll get uh, back into the saddle. There is an agenda. So uh, let's jump right through it. Because I've added the first item. So I feel I'm supposed to share my screen, giving time for others to add uh, agenda items. Um, yep. Stuff I've added is uh, the preview of uh, importing files to MFS by default. Um, so let's unpack what that means because we usually have problem with naming things. Uh, long story short, there's a latest beta version of IPFS Companion, um, which uh, includes a contribution made by Colin Fruit. Uh, it's uh, something we should do a long time ago, but we always like postpone it. But finally, it's getting uh, to IPFS Companion. Long story short is that in the past, uh, IPFS Companion was uh, using low-level PIN API for keeping stuff around. So if you clicked on an image, uh, there was option add to IPFS, and that option simply added stuff to IPFS using IPFS add command, and that's it. So that created implicit pin. However, you were not able to track what's happening with that file. You were not able to easily go back to that file. You had to list all the pins and manage them on your own. So what we are doing now is that we are no longer using low level pins, we are moving to MFS. So MFS is this uh, file system abstraction we have in uh, IPFS. And Web UI provides us a user interface for browsing that, uh, uh, that file system, right? So the idea is that if you uh, now want to add a file on the web to IPFS, you import it to IPFS, and instead of being added to IPFS and opened at the gateway without any context, you, by default, you get redirected to the file in a directory in Web UI. So we are not sure if this is the, like, the best way to handle it, but for now we simply create IPFS companion imports directory and each import has a unique timestamp. So that means each time you add some, import something to IPFS, it will have its own subdirectory. Uh, if you want to group stuff by day or just by month, you can change this path. Uh, we probably will tweak it in the future, like the default, but for now it's what it is. Um, the thing is that now the file is added to IPFS. You can see this file name is not that much useful, but it's the original file name from the website. So we persist file names. You can of course like change it. Uh, and it's reflected in the MFS. You can browse the file. And something that's uh, interesting is that now you can uh, share it. So there's some going uh, patch to improve this situation. So you are able to copy the CID here, but there's a useful interface for sharing. And here you will get this shareable link. And in the future, at the end of this hash, there will be a parameter which persists the file name. So if you have a directory, that would be a CID of the wrapping directory. However, if you want to share just a single file, you will get a link which has the file name parameter, which tells the HTTP gateway or your local node to return you a file with proper content disposition header. 
um, that behavior of opening a file in web UI can be changed. Uh, you can also like use the old share files via IPFS user interface. It looks the same, but in the bottom, uh, those import options changed. You can decide to open imported file in the web UI or at the gateway, and you can ad hoc change the path. So if you got this, uh, you add this file this way, and you're back to web UI. Uh, so that's more or less the change we've landed in the beta. Uh, there are probably kinks, kinks to iron out, but uh, that's the current situation. On the uh, preferences screen, there is a new section called file import, where you can change this path, the default path. You can also change the behavior. Do you want to open imported files in web UI interface, or do you want to just use direct uh, gateway, like folder on the gateway? Uh, there's also an option to preload them uh, at the gateway of your choosing. I believe that's more or less it. Uh, this change is for both ad, uh, importing files using this uh, share files via IPFS screen, as well as those context actions. Uh, and we simplified those interfaces, so we no longer like give option to get to add it without persisting file name. So the idea is that people probably care about file names, and if you need a direct CID, you can always uh, just click here and then copy hash, and you get the direct CID. Uh, that's it, that's the beta. Uh, if you are a Firefox user, you can try it now. If you are a Chromium user or Brave user, uh, you probably need to like build it yourself because uh, Chromium Web Store takes about a week for accepting new releases. Uh, but that's it. Uh, it's just like the first preview of this feature. So if you find that some language is uh, awkward or something it's not intuitive enough, please go to IPFS Companion repo, fill an issue, uh, and let us know how can we improve it. The idea is to simply remove those surprises when someone adds something to IPFS, but they cannot see it in files in web UI. Um, I believe that's it. I'll stop sharing now. Jim? That, that's a really, really cool feature. Um, can, how, how much work would it be to add in like an extra metadata file, like a JSON file? So I would say like, this came from this website, you know, it was embedded in this, or this is the original URL. This is the page it came from. Oh, so I, could just, I, could, I could see that working into a lot of people's workflows if they could just get like JSON files together in the MFS directory with the, with the actual things that we, we're we actually could do that when you like right click on an image on the website or if you like highlight a snippet of text and you want to add this quote as a text file. Yeah. We could like create additional JSON file or something. It's just a yeah. matter of format. If, you, if there's a format or you got a suggestions, just fill in the issue, because it's, I believe it's- Yeah, it'd just be sort of good for extra, people could build tooling around it if it had like a JSON file or something. Yeah, yeah, probably- we You could try like, to use extra like custom files, file metadata, but no, that's not supported we, yet. And uh, I don't know if you want to hide stuff in the files, because then people might, it's like exif data, you know, people accidentally leak information. Um, okay, but, yeah. yeah. I think like JSON file with like link and type, uh, page title and time, date timestamps, stuff like that. It makes sense. This, this is super exciting to see happen. I think, I think this is, we can really build a much, much better user-oriented workflows on top of MFS by default. Uh, this will, I think, really support a lot of the, if we want to do more Wikipedia-related work, as well as like um, more kind of like we talked about op opportunities for more laser focused things around sharing, publishing, sending, uh, that this will be more human understandable being file system centric at every point that we are generally visual to the user. So this is super, super great. Uh, I don't know who this Colin Fruit is, but uh, we should send Colin a, a serious swag pack. We 
sure. Uh, thanks, Colin, if you're watching by any chance. Um, yep, uh, the thing to keep in mind is that historically, IPFS Companion and our browser extension and most of our yeah, like GUI tools were targeted towards like people, very technical people who like a lot of choices. So we provided choice between like, I want to upload a file and get like the direct uh, CAD on the gateway, or I want to keep the file name most like the safer default, like most of people don't even know how to answer to that choice. Um, so we are slowly transitioning our user interfaces. It's like, as I said, it's just like the first tab. We'll probably refine those user interfaces, uh, language. I submitted patches to web UI to at least like unify language around copying CID and sharing. Um, so th there's like similar language uh, in browser extension and web UI. But it's like first step towards uh, improving this space. All right. I guess we can move to the next point at our agenda. Hack, what is your news for us? My news. Uh, I'm moving to test ground. Is that it? I don't yeah. have the I don't have the egg pad or or hack MD open. I added this item for you. Oh, let me check it. Where can I find it? find the link? Where is my calendar? So I'm moving, and yeah, I will still be coming to this call. That's good, so, but we are super sad to like see you less. <laughs> yeah, we would we would like to thank you for all of the hard work that you have done so far <laughs> for IPFS desktop and its transformation into a usable and enjoyable, user friendly piece of software, and all the trials and tribulations that you have gone through with Electron, your favorite piece of software infrastructure <laughs> slash nightmare. Thanks. And thanks for pushing the, the co-hosting stuff further and farther forward. There are PRs I open. I know. <laughs> They're on my queue, in my queue. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, they will get back and I will hunt you <laughs> for like <laughs> landing those changes. Uh, but it's like the ball is on my end. I'm, I'm slowly going through my backlog. Uh, yeah, so Hack is moving to test ground, but it, he, he's still uh, in IPFS project. Test ground is uh, initiative uh, for creating a test, like tooling and orchestration for better, better understanding how peer-to-peer uh, -peer protocol like IPFS and generally the P2P uh, behaves when we make changes to it. So we are more confident uh, in making those changes to the low-level protocol before pushing an update to the, those millions of users we have. Um, yep. Uh, speaking of, uh, about my backlog, end-to-end -end test status. End-to-end um, -end test status. So I started working on that during the lab week uh, with Cypress. Uh, Cypress is, is like batteries, inclu batteries included uh, testing tool which is not Selenium based. They just inject some uh, uh, payload uh, to orchestrate the browser from within. Um, it's most, it's uh, like Chromium only, but they are working on, uh, like Firefox is slowly catching up uh, and, and uh, there are Electron plugins uh, in works. I was not uh, too happy about the fact that the or additional orchestration that we need uh, for spawning Go IPFS or JS IPFS uh, was not really uh, matching that well with how Cypress is doing things. So we would have to write a little bit of additional orchestration there. So I started to writing uh, just just to have a better comparison, uh, just uh, Jest uh, and Puppeteer and uh, IPFS D control uh, based stack today. Uh, 
before we had a chat about uh, view press with Hugo and Chris, but uh, I hope to land it uh, this week. Should be easier to maintain than Cypress. Um, that's like my update. I need to finish it to actually uh, have a better opinion. Uh, but it looks uh, like a smaller thing, especially that we want, don't want to like, create a lot of end-to-end uh, -end testing. We basically just want to have like one smoke test per screen. So on the status page, we want to ensure there's a peer ID on the node displayed. So, okay, that confirms we got HTTP connection to the API, that the UI got rendered. So this one type of test per screen, um, it's our goal. So I feel that may be easier to maintain, especially now that uh, Hack is uh, moving away and we need to figure it out in the next quarter, uh, the maintenance plan for our GUI applications. Um, any questions? Is there, can you link a, uh, is there a, a PR or uh, not issue? Yet. No, okay. not, not yet. Uh, the issue is, uh, yeah, the issue is the one about where I've put uh, the test matrix. Okay. All right. It would, probably, it, would probably, it would be great if other people could see that, even if you push it to like a, uh, just a, a branch, oh, so yeah, that people yeah. can see what, what it looks like. Yeah. It'd be should. great to be able to compare. Yeah, my plan, my, my, my plan is to sort of like push uh, both uh, and interlink them before we merge them. Um, uh, nice. Um, I, I just thought I'd mention the project I'm starting on test ground is I'm working on uh, connectivity testing. So figuring out how to do NATs and like WebRTC and communicating from the browser through various mechanisms um it's very undefined right now so um but i think there there might be some small points of contact between these different testing projects so i just thought i'd throw that out there is there a a, a repo for for that work where we can follow along uh yeah there's a, a it's called test plan for I'll, I'll i can drop in a, a link into the HackMD. Thank you. Especially like uh, WebRTC thing with uh, like upcoming uh, distributed peer to peer signaling that Jacob may get to at some point. We, this is where like stuff will get very, very interesting when we no longer need to run like a, any like third party node based rendezvous mm -hmm. servers or things like that. Yeah, I was very interested in all the, hooking all this stuff into PurePad, but PurePad, at the end of the day, it just evolved into just using a centralized WebSocket star server, and it was like, um, that works all the time, and there wasn't really a lot of incentive to, um, on that particular project to move beyond that, but that's where I think we want to get to with browser, like use a lot, if you're in the browser, should use WebRTC if there's other peers that are also active at the same time to go like true peer to peer. You still need that signaling capability though to do WebRTC. We, we've talked um, a lot about this, like the, the points of centralization even needed by WebRTC to be able to bootstrap to an independent browser-based network. And what it looks like from an adoption standpoint, I mean, when if browsers are able to connect to each other to be able to create a DHT it might be segmented from the main Go IPFS DHT, but it might actually be bigger at any given time because uh, all those end nodes are directly communicating to each other over WebRTC. I'm really looking forward to seeing the signaling work land. Uh, or as we've talked about several times too, is looking at alternate browser-based uh, connectivity options, even just to route around it to experiment. Native protocol test page. You sent me a native protocol test page that we can use for browsers that are implementing the IPFS colon slash slash protocol natively. Yeah. Can you I, share that here and demo it? That's a good idea. I really hope it loads. I really hope it loads. Uh, 
I mean, there's no desktop browser that anything would pass in right now, right? There would definitely be some failures. Yep. So uh, it's just like a simple page uh, to quickly eyeball. You can, if you got like the D web browser, you can quickly evaluate what's the surface uh, of support for uh, our protocols. So the sections for like IPFS colossal slash in links. And uh, some uh, examples of links, including links with uh, paths and, and hashes. Then, is it possible to load the uh, images from this protocol? Uh, and this separate problem with videos. Videos are especially interesting because this also tests is it a streaming protocol? Is it possible to seek to a specific uh, byte range? Uh, those are challenges we had with uh, P2P protocol handler, uh, and it's a good good test uh, test space to quickly eyeball what's what. And finally, there are HTTP requests that we, you would do from the JS. So you could make uh, old school AJAX request, or you could use fetch. Um, and we got like tests for both. Uh, this right now it's very rudimentary. Uh, eventually, it will it will be more streamlined uh, page, which sort of runs all tests in the background, and you got a table with results like green check mark or red check mark, uh, red red cross uh, next to the failed thing. But for now, you can test your the web browser, or we will use it in the future. Um, I believe we are missing uh, iframes here, but we will add those at some point. What's interesting is also a cross protocol uh, security parameter. So uh, when HTTPS was added, there was a big problem because the rules of requesting HTTP from within HTTPS were not defined and this security context had to be added to web browsers and specs were written for that. We don't have any specs for behavior when you are on HTTPS page and you want to load something from IPFS con slash slash protocol. And vice versa, if you are on IPFS con slash slash, this is a protocol which in theory, uh, if it's properly implemented in your browser, gives you uh, content integrity guarantees. And what happens if you embed uh, content from HTTP, which does not come with those types of guarantees, it, it comes with different types of guarantees. Um, so I believe this uh, protocol handler test suite will eventually be a place where we can test if things are blocked or not blocked by browser vendors. Uh, so it would not only be a place to discuss uh, support for IPFS protocol handlers, but also to have the dis this discussion about uh, the, what happens at the border between protocols. It sort of reminds me back in the early days of CSS and they had the, the, the happy face test page. I, I forget what that was called. Oh yeah, yeah, and if something was wrong, the face was like it was a bunch of acid, the acid test. Oh yeah, yeah, acid yeah. test. Yeah. Um, so th this is super useful, and it's already come in very handy when working with Opera and who are testing their native protocol support. Uh, even though the core of the support in Opera for Android is using the gateway. Uh, HTTP gateway underneath, they support the native protocol handler. So we have an actual mobile browser that we can test against and discover some of these issues early. And it's been really great to be able to have an you know, browser engineering team who are helping us figure out the answer to these questions around level of support for things like uh, mixed, uh, mixed protocol, uh, HTTP links and resources loaded in IPFS origin versus the and, the, and the reverse of that, what happens when you load an image over IPFS in an HTTP or HTTPS page. There's, there's, a, an, there's not a lot of precedent for something like this. 
because most of the mixed protocols before are either HTTP and HTTP, but they encrypted or not, and there's pretty clear rules around that. But most of the other protocols that browsers supported up until this point didn't actually load resources that would were able to be embedded in the page in that same way. Or like in case of FTP, over time got removed and the problem disappeared. <laughs> So, and that's part of the uphill battle that we have, right? Is that browser vendors generally, if uh, and, and standards bodies have been generally collapsing protocol support for for both usage and security reasons, but uh, most mostly as a, as a side effect of declining usage, uh, HTTP really supplanted those use cases that things like FTP had up until that point. But now we have new protocols with new features that are a superset of. Or, or, or at least overlap with what HTTP can do. We were about to grow usage. And it's a, it's a good situation that we got not only IPFS, but there are protocols like Secure Scuttlebutt and, and that. So we are not, not into that situation where we are like designing for a single specimen. We, are, we have more diverse ecosystem, which actually it's a very positive thing that there are like different security guarantees, different like mutability, immutability defaults between protocols, uh, which means we need to like solve those questions from the get go. Uh, yeah, interesting here it will be. Uh, I think the next one, it's also in the tree. Yeah. So one of the things that we've, we've talked about, and this is kind of browser related, and that's why I thought really this meeting is the best place probably to bring it up, is the role that you know, we've, we play in standards development and the long-term development of IPFS as a protocol and getting support in multiple places is going to require participation in standards bodies. Uh, as opposed to you know, up until now, it seems like for the most part, the, the bulk of the IPFS work has been to incubate, develop, and prototype and experiment with the protocol internally in our projects and directly with some of our biggest users. Uh, as adoption starts to grow, and especially as we start to engage with browser vendors, we need to get more input and start participating in a broader community conversation about IPFS and the types of characteristics for reliable and robust internet that we want to see. As part of that, engaging with standards bodies and, and being a, at, at the very least, a visible participant in some of the conversations that are happening in those places where decisions around these types of networking protocols are made is going to be important. So with that in mind, one of the things that I wanted this team to start thinking about and encouraging was participating in the quarter in the three times annually IETF meetings. These are, uh, let's see, I, th I think they're three times a year and basically anyone can join. There's no membership required. Um, I had a window Is that open, but now I can't find it. But the next one is in March, late March in Vancouver, the home of our esteemed Jim Pick. Uh, so it might be an interesting time to both, uh, at least we have a, have a first hangout, go to, go to the um, ITF meeting that's there, uh, and maybe collaborate with Mr. Pick here on something like a testing initiative or other type of project, that we, some of the connectivity projects that we've been talking about. So I wanted to float that since we're about three months out. I'm not a little over, so there's enough time to be able to coordinate if we wanted to do something like that. But um, I think that PL as a whole would really be in support of our participation and even just joining to kind of like be able to fly on the wall and hang out, be visibly present, have hallway conversations and, and talk to the folks that are, see what types of projects are being presented, uh, how decisions are being made in, in, these, in these meetings join some of the BOF meetings that are related to the work that we want to do and, and, and just be make IPFS more present in, in these circles as part of a long-term, longer-term initiative to be visibly present, engaged, and participating in networking standard decisions. We could also eat some uh, nice Chinese food while we're in Vancouver. I'm sure Jim could hook us up. Thanks so much. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. We got Eric now. Yeah, my ears Hi, were Eric. burning. Stop talking about me now. Oh man. 
if only you were here like five minutes ago. I want to make you look like you're in, in studio. Like you, you've drawn the curtain so that people can, can watch you in the studio and you can wave to the visitors out there. Mm -hmm. did, did you solve the upload, uh, the file sharing problem? Uh, solved in the, in the process. You also missed the, the demo. <laughs> I can like, uh, after the call, I can give you a quick demo. I, I will say, I don't want to derail the meeting, but I will say that my experience of, you know, going to IPFS uh, companion and choosing share a file, it gives me that interface. When I upload a file though, it then, it doesn't give me what you, what you posted. It gives me just a simple, like HTML index. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Cause it's like just released. Oh, sorry. Okay. Did not like. And, and, also, and this is really just a building block too. Like I think the, this patch is really the core functionality that adds the ability to use mutable file system as kind of the default share space. And from that, I think we start to layer on more either user experiences that are either both in web UI and align with what use, the regular user tasks there are going to be. And I think this is just like a first, first draft of that. Um, but also, like we talked about, if you watch the recording, I think this is really a, a jumping off point for a variety of different types of, of higher level user and application functionality that we can develop that are centered around some of the core use cases that IPFS does want to address on the web, such as independent publishing, uh, unrestricted sharing. Yes. Ugo, you look like you're on the yeah. cover of a Queen album. <laughs> or, a, or a Fuji's album. Yeah. Uh, sidebar, I have two IPFS companion icons in my Chrome browser. It's because you're using the wrong browser. I guess so. No, actually, actually, it's uh, yeah, it's a valid problem. If a user is using IPFS companion from the stable channel, and then they decide, oh, I want to test the latest things and they install the beta version, they end up with two mm -hmm. extensions. They both say the same version. The same icon. Oh. I believe. Really? 0422. No. 0422. They should be some different extensions. Yeah, if the idea is the same. <laughs> it's an extended extension. Anyway. Anyway, we probably need to figure it out a way for a companion to detect, hey, there's this other guy. Is he like in the newer version? Should I like shut myself down or something? Uh, uh, I need to check if it's even possible to detect other extensions. Cause you know, the problem with uh, this web extension ecosystem is that uh, there's a lot of like a mal malicious activity. So the security perimeter between browser extensions is pretty strict. And you can not always like tell what other extensions user had, have because that's like additional bits of entropy you can use to, for fingerprinting. Uh, but it's, it, it's a valid point that we, we need to either be better at communicating that you need to disable the other version or or maybe automate this somehow. Um, I'll link you a recording of the demo I did in the beginning of this call. And there are also like uh, some web UI related uh, issues I opened to like improving this uh, sharing path from companion. So when I want to share, like actually the, the, at every step, it should be like sharing focus. So I should not have additional clicks for getting the link for sharing and stuff like that. Uh, but that's, uh, uh, yeah, I'll link them in notes and, and, and then post the recording the video. later. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, going back to agenda, uh, let me like paste uh, just once again link to the notes. Uh, the next step, FOSDEM and work week. Yep, so I believe we've talked about this uh, during the lab week. Uh, FOSDEM happens this year, as always, and we probably have a lot of topics that we did not have time to um, 
finalized uh, during uh, our past uh, engagements, during team week, lab week. So maybe we could have a work week around FOSDEM. I believe that's the idea, right, Dietrich? Yes. Who here is planning on going to FOSDEM already? Four of us. That is enough to do some stuff. Uh, I think there is a plan in the works for some type of IPFS team meetup in Q1, but I don't know when yet. So I think we should probably figure out the, that de those details. Uh, but given that, that there are a number of us going to FOSDEM regardless, that maybe possibly the week before FOSDEM or the week after FOSDEM, uh, either staying there or joining, going somewhere nearby, or the, the, uh, with the weather is uh, nicer than Brussels in February, end of January. So uh, let's just want to make sure to float that idea out there. Uh, so that you can mark it on your calendar or at least have that in mind when you're doing planning and expect some more news about that once we have a better understanding of what the full Q1 schedule and what the 2020 uh, planning uh, decisions are going to be because um, that might affect those plans as well. Sounds like a plan. It's a plan for a future plan. It's, it's more a like a... It's a plan to have a plan. More. Yes, there will be plans. Cool. Uh, test ground connectivity test plan. Jim, is it something you want to show or is it the thing that you mentioned? I just mentioned I just put the link in there. So uh, you can look at it, but there's not really anything written up yet. So <laughs> All right. that's uh, where you would go in the future when there's more stuff. All right. Cool. Uh, we are at the end of the agenda. So, Eric, do you want to discuss something related to this sharing thing? No, I'll watch the video. All right. And uh, chime in with meaningless blather afterwards. Oh, I, I, I would really appreciate feedback because it's like, just uh it's uh, the low level logic was contributed by uh, like, like our community member uh, colin fruit and i just like tried to bridge the gap between where a companion is and where the existing user interface in web ui is uh there's still like missing chunk when maybe i can like do a quick demo i think it's useful because it was not that okay. obvious uh, One thing too, can you add, should we just file issues in IPFS in, in a companion or web UI if we want to add suggestions? Or maybe, maybe you should just start an issue for like, please drop improvements here or something like that. I think it's easier to triage if you just go to companion. Uh, if you use companion as an ent like a starting point, like an entry point for sharing, then you just go to companion repo and, and, and fill a new issue. It's easier that way. We can always move it to web UI if it's web UI specific. Uh, I think maybe, uh, do I have, yeah, I have a running note. Um, so if I like share a file with companion, um, it opens in web UI, but actually what I wanted, I wanted to share, right? So wh what I wanted, I wanted to be at this step when I need to like manually go here, click share, and got this. Like this screen, this like directory opened with this overlay pop-up is the state I would expect to happen automatically when I finish the sharing like flow. Um, so that's something I figured out like that's missing. Um, and would like to hear right. thoughts. I think there's an issue in IPFS web UI for that. I just filled today with some prototypes. So if you, Eric, if you got any like uh, ideas, if this flow or user interface could be improved, that would be useful. I'll paste the link to the yeah. issue in chat. A, a notification that said uh, link copy to, to clipboard or something. 
I uploaded yep. it and I've got a link to my clipboard. Oh yeah, yeah, like. Best interface is no interface. Yeah, yeah. That's actually even better idea. Can you like write, write uh, it down in the issue I linked? That would be super useful. Jim? Can I? Yeah, I would suggest um, like work, working in some animation if possible because it's actually doing a lot of things. Like it's actually putting the, copying the file, downloading the file, putting it in your local IPFS node and then making it available to share. So um, just for somebody to understand what's going on, uh, even if it's instant, <laughs> like it would be good if there was, it took a few seconds of animation just so that somebody can be like, oh, there's all this work going on. Um, I don't know general UX thing. I, I, I second that. I, one of the ways I've seen this uh, action to action to clipboard do that type of communication is by adding a little bit of the notification as well. So in the system level notification, like the language can say, this file been, has been added to your IPFS repository and is now in your clipboard. Like the action is complete. And that gives the user a bit of a cue that not only is it now on the clipboard, but it also, these other side effects happen. Um, one of the side effects that is interesting in our case is that it's taking up hard drive space, but it doesn't show up in Finder anywhere, for example, or Windows Explorer. Or, so you have these, the fact that we use a repository that is not mapped to a part of your visible file system that users are used to means it's there, but not there. So that both is a feature and a risk. So for something that they might want to delete or think they've deleted, it's also still there in their IPFS repository. So I, I do like that the default right now is that it opens web UI because then it prompts users to understand that web UI is there and that's where their files are. So that's like a visual way of saying, here's where my stuff is if it's an IPFS. But there also, there's not really a, a clear way to delete or remove or people don't know to go to their regular place to be able to go back to that. Could be both yeah. and. Yeah, I just, um... Thinking about like reclaiming hard disk space, I just spent two weeks reclaiming hard disk space on my laptop. Well, it's an old laptop; it's only got 500 gigabyte hard drive, and which is like used to be like an infinite amount of space. But then I'm just noticing the standard pattern these days of all applications is to just use up all your hard disk space, and there's like 200 different applications just filling up the hard drive at all times, and there's no unified interface for users to reclaim all these caches and things. Um, this might, it might actually be beneficial for people to be able to put things into their IPFS node if there were good tools for actually uh, managing that stuff. Um, I, I know that'd be a massive work project to do, but um, yeah, the, the, the state of the, the, the present state of the art of computers in general and hard disk space is Everybody just buy the biggest SSD possible because you're never going to like get that disk space back. Yeah. Um, so, somehow, like related but not related to IPFS that much is that I realized for years, like for decades, even I had, I have this thing set up on all my machines that where I have like a temporary directory in my home directory, which has and there's like a cron job which removes everything, anything that's older than th three weeks. So when I work on some project which I don't plan to go back again or stuff like that, I basically do that within that directory. And I don't need to worry that that directory will grow to like gigabytes over, over years. It's just like slowly purging itself based on the last like creation or modification or access. Um, that so somehow re reminds me that we like still don't have uh, uh, this automatic garbage collection in JSIPFS. Uh, we just have garbage collection which you manually run. And also in, in the browser context, we still did not figure out this. In the uh, browser is automatic. It, yeah, the persistent storage, which is not really persistent by default, it's a separate thing. The problem is that it's the storage itself is shared by, it's per origin, right? And there are APIs for 
getting like the currently used space, which could be a hint for this automatic garbage collection in our browser environment. Uh, which somehow, which is like automatic garbage collection in JSIPFS feels to me sort of like that thing I have, uh, have had for years in my Linux boxes. Uh, so if you like remove something from uh, MFS or, and don't have a pin, it will, you don't need to worry about like removing stuff. You only need to worry about keeping stuff around. Um, I'm not, I, I feel like we probably need like a better abstractions for this or like language. Because um, right now it's, it feels like a, just copying the concepts for, from regular file system to MFS. Um, but we, we probably don't leverage all, all the features uh, there are. Um, yeah, so I, I, there already is language for this that is understood by some people. And I, I think the challenge is that with the way we operate is a pretty significant departure from, from the norms that people have around expectations of basic file operations, how, how computers work. It's pretty file system centric in a lot of ways. The more we can build bridges, like the, the MF, just the, ch the change to MFS by default is a significant example of, of us speaking the user's language and make a step towards that. Looking for other ways as we design more features on top of that where we can leverage that language is going gonna, is gonna to help. Yeah, but first we need to <laughs> provide just the basic user interface for saying, hey, that IPFS thing, I want to allocate only like 10 gigs or 100 gigs and respect that and probably like make a better visualization. Uh, like speaking where we are right now, we don't even like, we just show some numbers which are still highly confusing without like the low level understanding how IPFS data store works. Uh, so we are like long, or a long way. Uh, to get to the point where we are easy to use and understand. Jim? So moving things to MFS, um, is there thought about synchronizing MFS between multiple devices so that uh, it sounds almost like a CRDT thing, um, which is uh, something I'm interested in, but um, has that been discussed? Um, it was not, however, it, it feels like something you could uh, tinker with without like changing IPFS core because it's just like on top of MFS. Uh, just like co-hosting experiment we did, uh, things that are built on top of this standardized uh, file system API for MFS are easy to experiment. Uh, it's just a DAG, right? Uh, the, for for every node, there will be like a root DAG for MFS at any point. Uh, and something could be polling and synchronizing them. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking like, like I pinned something in on my cell phone. It's like, but I actually like it stored on my computer at home, which has a big hard disk. Although actually my new cell phone actually has as much flash memory as my SSD on my old laptop, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, um, but the, the idea like not having to manually synchronize things like, you know, it'd be nice if you could just sort of set a policy and it's taken care of, you know, you have to, you have to do the, 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 the gardening, the organizing on your top level namespace where you're organizing things, but then where, where things get persisted in the long run, uh, I don't know. Do you have an example of, one thing that might help is even, aside from any kind of policy or anything like that, like a, a code sample for how people can use IPFS CRDT to be able to do the basic transfer, then there, a lot of people, like I think with that type of example in hand, a lot of people can easily build higher level abstractions on top of that. Yeah, well, like even like IPFS cluster has moved to using a CRDT to synchronize things. So, for example, like if you say you're doing the 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 pinning from the into MFS and putting them into directories with the date on it, it's like that's great. Um, but wouldn't it be nice to be like everything older than a year? Don't pin it on my current device. Pin it on my archival device, 
but I thought I would just click on the thing and it just pulls in because it's like all IP press. Um, I don't know. The, the, the challenge is going to be the UX for all this stuff and getting people to be able to understand that, that these models. So. Yeah, I, th I think a, an, an introductory code sample of how to use like this was something that we've talked about a little bit about before is that IPFS CRDTs are really hard to get started with. And I, I'd love to be able to have some examples in hand on how that, that get people started because then those higher level application patterns can can be built like that even that a CRDT that syncs to another service, to another pinning service, to even a non IPFS based service would be really, really powerful. Yeah, um, uh, I've been using Dropbox, and it's got this feature where you could you can basically have some things locally. Then you can say things are only cloud only, um, and it, about, the only problem is I'm discovering it like totally bogs down if you got more than a, a million files. So um, <laughs> yeah, but like in in case of MFS sort of like low level primitives are there like by default when you like copy like ipfs path to mfs it, it's not fa actually fetched it's just a pointer lazy pointer until you visit that directory you don't need to have those blocks um yeah yeah the, the reason the crd keys come into is because you have multiple devices but you're offline on one but you move the directory to a different place and then you're on a different device which is also offline and you delete the directory and then like, what happens when it all reconnects? Yeah. Um, Probably it requires uh, like some additional layer of metadata. Uh, it's not like we could just take DAGs. Probably need some additional log of changes. All right, we got two more minutes. So unless there is a super late topic, I will end it here and I think we will see each other next week. So until next week, stay safe. Bye.